Welcome to Inside North Dakota Politics with Nicholas Qualick, Josh Manny, and political correspondent Maddie Beer Temple. Good morning, I'm Nicholas Qualick. And I'm Maddie Beer Temple. This is Inside North Dakota Politics. From the debate over the Second Amendment to sports gambling to the drawing of political district lines, the last week has been a busy one in North Dakota. So let's get right to it. A feeling of relief has swept over many lignite advocates as news broke Thursday that Coal Creek Station has a potential buyer. Coal Creek and its lignite coal supplier, Fall Creek Mine, currently employ roughly 700 people, and the plant was scheduled to shut down in 2022. So with that deadline fast approaching, a collaborative effort to save the plant from shutdown has been underway. Officials are currently conducting exclusive negotiations, and Governor Doug Burgum says this is all a very good sign. They must think that they can get a deal done uh, by the end of the summer uh, if they're making this announcement today uh, to get through all the final closings. But there's a lot of a lot of elements, federal regulations and other elements to uh, to close this kind of transaction. But a very, very positive step for the two parties to make this announcement. As of now, the name of the potential buyer has not been made public. North Dakota Senate voted overwhelmingly against a bill to legalize recreational marijuana. If passed, House Bill 1420 would have restricted the use of cannabis to those 21 and older, limit the possession of it to one ounce, and ban growing the plant at home. Senators supporting the bill say passing it would ward off citizen-led efforts to cement legalization into the Constitution through a ballot measure. Senator Judy Lee said she and other lawmakers may not like the idea of legalizing the drug, but it's coming to the state one way or another, and it's better the legislature be at the forefront. But senators who opposed the bill cited concerns over driver impairment, teen use, brain development issues, and the fact the drug is federally illegal. The bill failed by a vote of 10 to 37. After every census, North Dakota's 47 legislative districts are redrawn to adapt to population shifts in the state. Those districts determine how many lawmakers get elected and who your representative is. But some say a bill gives too much power to lawmakers themselves to draw the lines and keep their seats safe in the next election without public input. Every 10 years, legislative districts are reapportioned based on new population data. But how transparent is that process and should lawmakers be drawing the lines? This is a big deal. This comes up every 10 years with the census. Rick Guion says a bill that keeps drafts of redistricting plans out of public view could create unfair representation for voters. The last couple of decades, we've really seen some gerrymandering. I mean, some of the maps in the urban areas look like, uh, you know, a piece of modern art. Every decade, a redistricting committee comprised of lawmakers from both chambers meets to draw new districts. In this year's bill, drafts of redistricting plans would be exempt from open records, meaning the public could view proposals only when presented at meetings, but not see them beforehand. Representative Chet Pollard says because the meetings are open, it shouldn't be an issue. I, I I just want to let folks know be, be, because when they see the word exempt, it sounds like it's going to be done in secret. When we have a districting committee, whoever's going to be on that committee, that's got to be open record. That part is going to be open record. But North Dakota Newspaper and Broadcasters Association lobbyist Jack McDonald says making the drafts confidential until presented deprives the public the chance to prepare meaningful testimony or objections to their plans. The public and the legislature should see those, and I think there's just a little disagreement over the way it's it's the the, the way the statute is written. McDonald suggested an amendment to require drafts be public two weeks prior to meetings, similar to how legislative bills are available online before hearings. I liken it to the legislature, and you have a bunch of bills here, but the bills didn't become public until the day of the hearing. That's what it seems like. This is written, and that wouldn't be fair. I mean, how could you testify if you couldn't even see the bill until the hearing? Guion brought up another concern with the bill. It says that lawmakers will make up the redistricting committee. You can't have politicians uh, picking their voters in secret. We'd like to see an independent commission, um, possibly the ethics commission, uh, in the future tackle the redistricting issue. The House passed the bill overwhelmingly last month by a vote of 86 to 6, and the Senate Political Subdivisions Committee is still considering the suggested amendments. Reporting in Bismarck for KX News, Maddie Beer Temple. The Senate committee that heard the bill Friday did not yet vote on the bill, but appeared open to the amendments during the hearing. 
North Dakota Senate has killed a resolution that would have let residents decide if sports gambling should be allowed in the state. The Senate initially killed the bill on Friday. It was reconsidered Monday, but it still failed by a vote of 23 to 24. Last month, it passed the House by a wide margin. If it would have been approved by both chambers, a measure to allow sports gambling would have appeared on the November 2022 ballots. Some North Dakota senators have amended a transgender sports bill to make the legislation apply only to high school teams and not to college or club sports. The Senate Judiciary Committee voted Monday 6 to 1 in favor of an amended version of a House bill passed in February. The amended bill would prohibit a publicly funded school or entity from knowingly allowing a person under 18 to play on a team exclusively for the opposite sex. However, the bill would allow girls to participate in school sports for boys. The bill will now go to the full Senate for a vote. North Dakota lawmakers killed a bill that would have allowed those without cosmetology licenses to work freelance. Right now, state law requires 1,800 hours of training at cosmetology school to legally do hair and makeup. The new bill would have eliminated that requirement, allowing for someone to become a niche beauty services provider as long as they take a four-hour course in safety and infection control. Freelancers say current law makes work that's legal in Minnesota a crime in North Dakota and creates barriers to enter the beauty industry. But licensed cosmetologists say that training is crucial for client safety and now is not the time to roll back regulations. Why would the state allow individuals to simply become makeup artists and hairstylists and eyelash technicians with only four hours of training with no regulations under this chapter? Despite dying in the Senate 4 to 43, the bill succeeded in the House last month by a vote of 86 to 7. Still to come on Inside North Dakota Politics, a deep dive on the state of North Dakota's budget with Republican Senator David Hogue. Stay tuned. After the whistle is right here on KX, go beyond the game with Phil Bonatti, Luke Gamble, and David Gibson. After the whistle, Sunday nights at 1035, right here on KX. Every three days, someone in North Dakota dies by suicide. And the power of one phone call can make a difference. Your life matters. You have a purpose. First Link can help you find support in your area. Reach out. You don't have to struggle alone. This isn't the end of your story. Let's, Let's find, find hope together. together. Call First Link 211 or 1 800 273 TALK. Get ready to win big with not one, but two exciting events at Sky Dancer Casino and Resort. Senior Day starts March 10th. Guests 55 plus will have a chance to win $200 in cash drawings every Wednesday. Then our April rain drawings begin March 28th. Every Saturday in April is your chance to win with three final winners taking home $777 in cash. Visit SkyDancerCasino.com for details. Don't miss out on these two incredible events at Sky Dancer Casino and Resort. What's better than low prices? Even lower prices. That's what you get at iKeating Furniture World. Plus, no interest for five full years. Lower prices on everything you need, from furniture to flooring. And right now at iKeating, enjoy better sleep and save $300 on our most premium Tempur-Pedic mattresses. And save $300 on the best-selling Sealy Hybrid mattress. Plus, this is important, no interest for five full years. It's better than low prices. It's lower prices. Now at iKeating Furniture World. Before you turn in for the night, watch KX News at 9 on the Dakota CW. Get us over the air, on satellite, or through your cable TV provider. KX News at 9. Welcome back to Inside North Dakota Politics on KX. Welcome back, Senator David Hogue, a Republican representing District 38 out of Minot, joins us now. Senator, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. Now, you have a unique outlook on the budget, being that you're the caucus majority leader. You're set on the Appropriations Committee and the Interim Budget Committee. I got them all, right? Yes. Okay, <laughs> that's right. All right. So now that we are nearing the end of the session, how is the uh, budget shaping up for the biennium? The budget is, I, would, I, I don't think it's hyperbole to say it's outstanding. Um, and, and we're pleasantly surprised. Um, the projections have been on the positive side based on what we previously forecasted. 
Uh, we're forecasting an additional 106 million of additional revenue going into the general fund. We're um, forecasting an additional 72 million dollars that will be going that we didn't project before going into the Water Resources Trust Fund to help uh, fund. Uh, you know, the, the very large and expensive uh, water projects that we have going on across the state of North Dakota. Mm -hmm. um, this morning we heard in appropriations uh, from, the, from the state agencies, they, you know, they were pretty responsible in terms of the CARES Act dollars they got from the previous administration. They were not able to spend those dollars, and so there's some what we call turn back and we are, uh, we are considering whether to allow them to spend those dollars in the uh, balance of this biennium and into the next biennium. So really uh, things are in really good shape considering the, we're coming off the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Are there any areas where uh, party leadership may have diverged from the governor's proposed budget? Um, well, in every, in every budget, uh, there's going to be uh, what I would describe as modest disagreements. Uh, but there, fundamentally, there aren't a lot of major differences. Mm -hmm. um, and that's partly because, you know, we, we have ongoing dialogue with the governor and his objectives. So I, I wouldn't say there's, there's a lot of large differences. Yeah, dialogue is good, for yeah, sure. Yeah. So speaking of that, though, are there any areas you're specifically watching that could change is regarding the budget? I, I am. I am. You know, we, we talk, and I know you've covered the, the DAPL uh, situation yep. mm -hmm. and the Dakota Access Pipeline, and that's a big deal for North Dakota. Right. It's a big deal because when you start driving up the cost of getting that product to market, that affects the revenue for the state of North Dakota. It affects the revenue for the operator. It affects the, uh, the safety for the communities that will, uh, will be impacted if we have to transport that oil uh, by a different route, whether it's uh, um, uh, trucking it to uh, Linton, North Dakota, or um, uh, transporting it by rail. Mm -hmm. And so I, I stay focused on that because that's a, that's a big game changer that could throw off our projections that I mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. And since you are uh, the only senator appearing on this weekend's episode, I just want to get your thoughts about what you've been hearing out of uh, the news regarding Coal Creek and Falkirk. Very promising. Um, uh, I'm, I'm excited for them. I think um, um, we've talked about always uh, doing what we could um, from a state government uh, to keep that uh, entity viable yeah. because we're going to, you know, regardless of where you are at in terms of climate change and uh, the, the need to regulate the coal industry, um, we're going to need coal for at least the intermediate future because as we saw during the, during the, uh, the Texas brownout, blackout, whatever you want to call it, you have to have a ready supply of fossil fired uh, uh, coal plants to keep a sustainable level of, of, of electricity throughout the country. So the plant has a future. It's not something that, uh, that we ought to be um, dismissive of, and we ought to be willing to support it when necessary. Okay. Senator David Hogue, we appreciate your time. Thank you oh. so much for your insight. We hope we will uh, see you soon, and best of luck in the rest of the uh, legislature this year. Thank you. Thanks again for having me. Absolutely. When we return, a discussion about guns with attorney Shane Gettle. That's coming up on Inside North Dakota Politics. Menards has everything you need for your painting project. We have the best brands, best quality, and best prices, period, on paints from Dutch Boy and Zinser. Choose your paint colors with confidence. We offer free custom color matching and tinting to create thousands of color options. Give your home a fresh look and save big money with 11% off all Dutch Boy and Zinser paints right now at Menards. Save big money at Menards. Have you ever wondered why the sky is blue? Or why overnight thunderstorms are so much louder than the ones during the day? You have weather questions and I have answers. Each week I answer some of your questions you have about the weather. It could be as simple as weather terminology or things that make you go, hmm. 
If you have questions about the weather, I have the answers. Watch My Weather Wise Wednesday mornings only on Good Day Dakota. Sponsored by Roscoe Crane and Rigging. We switch. I switched to Chevy. I switched for more room. I switched for my family, for adventure. We love our Chevy. With an impressive lineup of cars, trucks, and SUVs, it's no wonder people are switching to Chevy year after year. I'm never switching back. Add another Chevy to your driveway. Current Chevy owners can get a $4,750 total cash allowance on most 2021 Equinox models. Visit westdakotachevy.com. Why'd you abandon Beverly? I ain't abandoned nobody. It was just time to come home. Just be prepared. There's going to be some deep resentment there. These youngers are about to change the game. We go get it! All American, Mondays at 7 on the Dakota CW. Welcome back to Studio 701. There are a lot of talented people living right here in North Dakota. Whether it's home, work, or play, life in the 701 is really all about how you live it. Watch Studio 701, weekday mornings at 9. Welcome back to Inside North Dakota Politics on KX. The nation is once again embroiled in a gun debate following the mass shooting in Colorado. The question is, as far as new law or policy goes, will there be anything done or will it be just all talk? Joining me now for some legal perspective is someone familiar to KX viewers, attorney Shane Gettle. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, you're welcome. We're glad to be here. Well, it's unfortunate that this has once again become a topic of discussion. At the same time, Shane, the same talking points are again being addressed. We've got gun rights, tighter gun laws, restricting sales of certain guns. As an attorney, you're familiar with rights and laws. I guess, where do we start? Well, first of all, you know, nobody wants to see the kind of uh, violence that has occurred in, in Georgia or, or in Boulder, Colorado, for example, in, in recent weeks. And Certainly, our hearts go out to the to the victims and their and their families. Um, and this is always a, a, a this is a tough issue because uh, on the on the one hand, we do have you know a Second Amendment right. It's an individual right as determined by the Supreme Court in a few cases and in uh, the past uh, decade. And uh, when we're dealing with rights, they're not always uh, unlimited. Uh, but uh, it, to do policy in this arena. You also have to respect the constitutional right of law-abiding Americans to keep and, and bear arms, and uh, and so you know we typically hear the uh, debate framed as one of getting less guns off the streets or or doing more background checks and and things like that versus really getting to the heart of uh, of why does someone pick up a gun and carry out a mass shooting and I. I think it's the second perspective that we really do need to focus on and uh, understand why uh, many of these are lone wolves. You know, they're going out on their own and, and acting out in some fashion. And uh, uh, in my view, uh, that's a behavioral health issue and we need to learn to recognize uh, these kinds of threats uh, earlier on. Well, you read my mind because the 21-year-old suspect, according to his lawyer, is suffering from a mental illness and did have a temper. Yet authorities said he purchased his weapon six days before the shooting and nothing uh, from a legal standpoint would have prevented him from doing so. He was not being watched by the FBI. Uh, it's still early in this case, but if he's not being watched, how would have more strict gun control stopped this from happening, Shane? Well, I think in his case, uh, it may not have. Maybe there were no, you know, red flags out there to to catch him, and and uh, unfortunately, that that's a reality that uh, that uh, is is uh, something that uh, is probably going to happen no matter what kinds of policies that we enact on either side. Uh, you know, that that's not to say that certain things can't be done. Uh, when you look at uh, you know what we've done at the federal level back in 1934, the uh, the uh, National Firearms Act was was enacted to to deal with the gangsters of the 20s and 30s who were hiding uh, short-barreled shotguns and uh, and types of uh, those types of things in their clothing. And if you're buying something with less than 16 inches, there's a pretty extensive uh, period of background there. It might take months to go through it. Buying something with a rifle barrel that's 16 inches or longer uh, takes a little less time. But you know we passed the the Brady Act in um, 1994, uh, that everybody has to go a five-day uh, waiting period so local law enforcement authorities can conduct background checks. And 
And what we don't often hear is, you know, how often maybe that itself has, has thwarted some of this gun violence. It's not going to catch everything, but, uh, but we should talk about how that has, uh, that has uh, led to perhaps some success. Now, when you look at Colorado, they have passed their own version of uh, background check in Colorado. They had a, a red flag confiscation law. They have a high capacity magazine law, as you noted. Uh, Boulder itself had uh, attempted to institute an assault weapons uh, ban back in uh, 19 or 2018, and that was overturned by the courts fairly recently. Mm -hmm. Despite all of these laws, though, we still had somebody act out, and I think it does come back to what what is the mental health, the state of health of someone in that capacity, in that you know, inclined to do that kind of thing, and what can we do? To, to learn more about how to detect uh, that among family members, among friends, among kids in schools, uh, so that we can all do a better job of spotting someone who's in trouble. Um, I've uh, found it very interesting when some of the folks who have committed these crimes have had the opportunity to be uh, interviewed later. Uh, most often we see somebody who is quite disturbed and didn't feel like anybody was listening to them. Yeah, well, I, I, think, so, I, I think a lot of people are frustrated by the fact that when it comes to this debate between mental health and background checks and red flag laws, it's either, it's an either or. So it's either this or that. Either, it's never, it doesn't seem to be a combination of the two. Yeah, and, and I'm not persuaded that you can layer on more uh, uh, restrictions on access to guns and solve this issue. Um, you know, most the guns that are owned in this we have we have a we have a gun for every american in the, you know there's 300 estimates of 300 some million guns out there um i own you know a half a dozen of them myself and uh they're safe and, and locked up and secure uh from from my children um you know i take individual responsibility for them so we're not you know we don't want to enact things that make it harder for people who are law-abiding citizens, by and large, when less than one percent of of uh, the guns that are out there on in, in owned by Americans are involved in these crimes. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't do anything. You know, sure. I I think that trigger locks and locking up guns is extremely important, and uh, that uh, that we ought to uh, make sure that, that that people who own guns are doing that and doing it responsibly. Of course, we can harden some of the public places yeah. like our schools, make it difficult for somebody to carry out these kinds of acts. I mentioned mental health, uh, uh, but, you know, getting the ability of first responders to arrive at the scene and strict enforcement of the gun laws we have mm -hmm. is very important. And then there's a the cultural aspects of this. Sure. I, I don't let my kids play first shooter video games simply because as their brains are forming, you don't want them to be numb to that kind of violence, which is in modern video games much more realistic. And this is not an easy thing. It's both cultural law and I think largely a behavioral health issue. And I want to get this really quickly. As you probably know about the Dickey Amendment, up until recently, that stopped the CDC from, uh, quote, advocating or promoting gun control. So when that changed last year, Congress authorized $25 million for the research for the CDC and the NIH. Uh, the question is, should we put all our eggs in the research basket to understand what needs to be done? I, I think we should put a lot in there. Even in the state of North Dakota, you know, we've, this legislature has been uh, over the past, uh, I'd say about three sessions, focusing more and more on behavioral health uh, issues and problems we have out there. And uh, I think that's appropriate. I mean, it's for a variety of reasons, not just to, not just to prevent these kinds of shootings, but, but to, to build stable societies and stable families. We need to recognize when people are in trouble. Uh, and that's not to say that everybody with a mental health issue is, 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 at a, is at a risk to be a shooter. I don't mean to intend to say that at all. I just think that at, at rock bottom, uh, what we're dealing with is, is someone who is, um, feeling isolated, feeling angry, uh, acting out, and uh, and sometimes just trying to get attention, trying to show others how much pain they're in. And uh, we really need to focus on that. All right, we'll leave it there. Shane Gettle, thanks for your insight. We appreciate it. Thank you. We'll be back in just a moment. Stay with us. Your business message in front of the right group of customers. Partner with an experienced team that knows how to make you stand out from the crowd. Take the next step kxnet.com backslash result driven. 
In the truck game, greatness is defined by a relentless commitment to the customer, forged over decades, built by a team resolute in helping you achieve your greatness. Experience this award-winning lineup today. Ford F-Series, America's best-selling truck for 44 years straight and counting. Now get up to 5,000 in total savings on the all-new 2021 F-150, only at your Northland Ford dealers. Oh my, with Chase Freedom Unlimited, I earn all this cash back? Oh, I gotta tell everyone. Hey, Rita, you can earn 3% on dining, including takeout. Bon appetit. Hey, Kim, you earn 5% on travel purchase through Chase. Way ahead of you. Hey, Neil, you can earn 3% in drug stores. Buddy, I'm right here. Why are you yelling? Because that's what I do. You're always earning with 5% cash back on travel purchased through Chase. 3% of drug stores, 3% on dining, including takeout, and 1.5% on everything else you buy. Chase, make more of what's yours. Sometimes you need someone to help. The National Suicide Prevention Lifeline is here. Answered locally by First Link. Connecting you with resources of help and hope. Dial 1-800-273-8255 to get connected. Before you turn in for the night, watch KX News at 9 on the Dakota CW. Get us over the air, on satellite, or through your cable TV provider. KX News at 9. Life in the 701 depends on how you live it. Join us for Studio 701 weekdays at 9 on PX. For news alerts, live stream, and your current conditions, KX News is always on. Download the KX News app today. You're watching KX News, putting North Dakota first. Welcome back to Inside North Dakota Politics on KX. A popcorn machine has caused quite the stir at our state capitol, even prompting some evacuations. We spoke with Representative Mary Johnson, who says for the past month, she's been enjoying the light snacks, but Monday, on her third bag of the day, the fire alarm went off for a second time that day. She says she wasn't aware of a policy that didn't allow electrical appliances in the building until someone took a deeper dive into it. She says given how old the state capitol is, and because it burned down back in 1930, it was understandable how sensitive the alarms are. You know, it didn't create much smoke, and actually the popcorn was not burnt. It was very tasty. From now on, Representative Johnson says she will make her popcorn at home and have it well ventilated. And with that, we're out of time for this week. Thanks for watching Inside North Dakota Politics. Enjoy your Sunday.